Good morning guys, it's Andrew from Stock Money Lizards. Hope you're doing great. So I haven't been posting, I didn't post last week, mostly because I didn't really find the time to sit down and make a video, but also because my views on the price hasn't really changed. And a few weeks ago, maybe a month, a month and a half ago, sort of I was advocating for a fall in price based off of the broadening wedge pattern that had been forming for quite a while i'm just gonna jump to the bitcoin euro one because it's the one i was using for this yeah so as you know we've been identifying this broadening wedge with two touches on support level and you have one two three and now four touches rejected on the resistance line and sort of we've already begun our descent down to very very critical support levels on the price which is roughly at 25k on the euro chart and roughly i would say about 27.5k on the usd chart so basically at this point i just want to just briefly touch on this chart which we had posted and spoken about since march 29th so since march 29th guys i've been pretty not bearish but aware that sort of prices can go down and this one this google broadening wedge pattern was the reason why you had one touch two touch one two three you also had a breakout from here which this is where we sort of varied a bit a bit from the current bitcoin market we did not really have a breakout of the broadening wedge pattern so what that tells me is basically the downside shouldn't be so ugly why because we didn't experience this nice increase in price so what i think might happen is yes we'll continue going down i don't think we're going to go down to these local bottoms over here i.e the second touch on the support on the support line i think we'll have will have an opportunity to bounce somewhere in this region on the bitcoin chart so when we were talking about this this was the broadening wedge pattern which was forming between february and march i had identified a 22.4k price target i don't think it's going to go down that low and i'll explain why soon i do think it's going to possibly hit this this high or possibly sorry not this high this sort of swing top and this swing top also we got oops all right so let me just quickly see what's going on so yeah so we have one touch two touch here and we just identified that this is probably an area of support that we if the price does go down we might find support at now this comes in at quite a healthy 23.7k price usd or 24.6k price usd now what i think might happen is i'm just gonna jump to the if i go to the weekly so I'm just going to jump to the weekly very quickly. And as you can see, okay, our moving average is in between in between the two levels that we just identified being 23.7k and 24.6k. And moving average comes in at 24.4k. Now we've been saying that the moving average needs to get touched before the bull market starts to moving average needs to get touched and what i mean by that is we talked about this last time once we break out of the this is the 20 week period moving average normally what happens in a bull market is we pierce through it we stay above it but then we come back down to to basically find it as support once it is respected as support for in this case it was one two three four five ish weeks then we sort of went on a nice run in this particular case we had broken above it and we sort of really overstretched for a long time and then so then when we came to it we sort of cracked through straight away i don't think that this breakout was as violent as the one we had in 2019 from 3k all the way to 13k i don't think it was didn't feel like that so what i'm expecting is that price will come back down to these levels and it will get supported keep in mind we had identified somewhere on one of my charts we had identified an area 
time frame. Yeah, here it is. So the time frame that I'm personally looking at is somewhere between now and the 31st of May, 30th of May, I expect to see that sort of price drop. And the reason why I feel like it's gonna come before the 30th of May is nothing too complicated at all. I just went to the previous time. Oh, I have to find it one second. I just went to the previous time we broke above it and it was a bull and it was the start of the bull market proper. And I just measured the time Come on, I just measured the time it took us to reach it back and that was 126 days. So I literally just went over to this chart here and I measured it 126 days. So broke above here, 126 days takes us to Chirica the 29th of May, 29th of May. So I'm expecting something to happen until the 29th of May, give, give or take maybe five, five, 10 days. So, if you've been following these videos, you can see that price is going according to plan. There's been some, I don't know, minor fees that the miners are making money, more money than, than they would otherwise from transaction fees. Honestly, if I was a miner right now, I'd probably take this opportunity to sell. Why not if the minor fees are high? So that could be one of the reasons why price drops. Um, then again, I haven't really understood too much about this area. I'm looking just more at the technicals. I just want to quickly dive into the ETH BTC chart. As you know, I've been following this so closely and we sort of really, we studied this quite well in our last video where we sort of saw this as a rounding top. We even gave an example on Euro USD price action. I don't know when it was 2009, 10, which moved very similar to this and sort of it ended up with the price going down. I see this happening as well with the PTC chart. You have two touches here, one, two, three, four touches here. I imagine this rise is going to find resistance at somewhere at 0 0.68 and then make a turn downwards and sort of we will see if this falling wedge is held if it is held then there's arguably a, an opportunity for eth to make a breakout to the upside if it isn't held then what we can see is maybe more downside for the ETH BDC chart but in any case this wedge goes on to literally the end of the year start of next year so if ETH bleeds against Bitcoin for the entire year, then that means that altcoins are going to also bleed against Bitcoin for the entire year. And I'm just going to take the moment to just tell you guys, we have a new stock money. Oops. We have a new stock money newsletter out. So guys, if you haven't joined, please join. We're, we're doing our best to provide you with really good information from, from lots of different aspects. We're trying to talk about coins which 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 are interesting maybe that not really spoken about and all this kind of stuff also if you would like to purchase a light a bitcoin light or any other light just please speak to me via the start chat over here on neonbay.co so let me know moving on to the mvrvz score guys i'm on chain analytics basically the the mvrvz score is doing well the rodel ratio which basically is good at identifying tops as you can see every time it falls into this colored rectangle it sort of identifies the top one over here in this case over here this time it well the student actually entered the the colored area but i mean still a good indicator and now we're sort of pushing upwards so maybe we are coming to a local top before we go back down. I don't know. Just curious. I'm just going to watch this for now because I don't, I don't really follow this one. Finally, I want to finish with the net realized, net unrealized profit or loss, which is basically identifying the state of emotion in the current cycle that we are in. As you can see in the past, we have entered the optimism anxiety phase and then fell back into the hope and fear phase and then sort of made a push to the belief denial back into the optimism anxiety and then sort of our push for euphoria and greed at the moment we have what we can say is that 
in the history of Bitcoin, we've made one low, a higher low, a higher low compared, and, and now a higher low. That's four higher lows in a row. With regards to capitulation, that's a good sign, I think. It shows maturity in the asset. I also can see how we've pushed now through hope and fear. And that was that push from 14 to circa 29, 20, 30k USD. But now we're sort of hanging on on that optimism and anxiety state where I think everyone is optimis optimistic, but the rise in price has been quite significant. So it's turning into a bit of anxiety and that anxiety could sort of mold itself into fear. But I don't think that's going to last very long because as we saw, as we saw, chances are that we're going to definitely hit this moving average over here. Like I've been saying this for a while. I really think we have to come down to this moving average over here. Once we come down to this moving average, we'll see if it gets cracked. That's not a good sign at all. If it gets if if the moving average doesn't hold, then I honestly think we'll either go back down to 16, 17k or lower. Like it's 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 that it's Holding this area is super, super important. And uh, yeah, we'll just see. So one last thing on the Heiken Ashi candles and the Tom Mark indicators, you can see we had our eight to nine weeks of upside. The count has now reset. So I expect four weeks of downside. I don't know what today is. Today is 10th of May. I mean, it's more or less in line with our target of 29th, 30th. Of May first week of June whatever where we'll come back down to this level and then what I expect is that we'll continue making a move to the upside if we look at the daily daily is really bad guys I mean you have your high which was rejected by the broadening wedge resistance line and then you came back down to this level fair enough on the count of eight or nine and then you sort of made a push you tried to hold this level of 28k you did manage sort of rejected and now you're sort of coming down i expect we're not gonna hold i really don't think we're gonna we're not gonna hold and something's gonna happen very very soon in that case the four hours looking in a mess too in that case just enjoy it i mean it's just gonna go down corrective phase if you're feeling a bit anxious just look at the heiken ashi on the monthly you have one two three four five months of upside now which is really good you have no shadow at the bottom of the last two candles which is good it means buying power is just propelling itself up and that's more or less it guys from today i hope you've had i hope this update has been has been Good, this is Stock Money and thank you for listening. We'll see what's going on. Stay safe and have a great week. Bye.